Hey guys, I'm Richard Holdner and welcome to the channel. Before we get going on the video today, please note this channel is an equal engine opportunity employer. By that I mean I test all kinds of different engines. I'm not a Chevy guy, I'm not a Ford guy, I'm not a Dodge guy, I'm not an import guy, I'm not a domestic guy, I'm an engine guy and that means I like to test every kind of engine I can possibly get my hands on. So if you take a look, there are playlists available, not just for LS motors, which the video is about today, but really every kind of engine. I have small blocks, big block Chevys, small block, big block Fords. I've got big block and small block Dodges. I've got the LA stuff. I've got the Magnum stuff. I've got the new Hemi stuff. I've got import stuff. I've got lots of Honda stuff. You name it, and I've probably tested it because I like them all. But today we're talking about how to prep your junkyard LS motor for turbocharging and more specifically which one of these combinations should you pick should you pick a little 4.8 liter that likes to rev or should you pick a larger 5.3 liter because it has more torque and better boost response let's find out hey guys if you're new welcome to the channel but what happens if you have a question? Hey, I saw this video, but I wanted to ask Richard a question. Well, you're in luck. You get to do that. Join us nightly, 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time on the live feed. You can come on, join the group. If I don't have an answer to your question, chances are there are lots of bright guys. They might have an answer. So if you've got a question about any of the video that you just saw, or maybe you're working on a project, join us live, 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time on this channel. To illustrate what junkyard LS you should pick between a 4.8 liter and the larger 5.3 liter, we're going to look at this both in terms of a naturally aspirated combination and ultimately a turbo, turbo. combination. Because a lot of guys, even though they might start out with an NA version and then add a camshaft or headers or tune and that kind of thing, probably in the back of their mind they're thinking, yeah, but later on I kind of want to add boost. So we're going to cover both of these. We're going to start out looking at naturally aspirated comparisons between a stock 4.8 liter and a stock 5.3 liter. And then we'll also look at a comparison between canned versions of both of those motors and what happens to the power curve and both the beginning of the power curve or low RPM and the end of the power curve and high RPM and which one of those matters most to you. We'll start off with our 4.8 liter. This was a junkyard 4.8 that I put together and it was less than ideal when I first got it but we managed to put everything together and fix all of the problems and this is pretty indicative of what you'll find with the 4.8 liter. It's a little bit on the soft side of the power curve of a lot of the 4.8s from the wrecking yard that I've tested, but it's right in range with the other pieces. So we ran our 4.8 liter on the engine dyno with the factory truck intake manifold and throttle body, the stock 706 slash 862 heads because they make the same power. It had a stock camshaft in it. It had long tube headers, inch and three quarter long tube headers with collector extensions. It had no accessories and no air intake, which is why this makes more power than we see versus the rated number offered by GM. We ran it with a Holly HP slash Terminator X. Both of them do the same thing because they allow us to dial in the air fuel and timing to try to maximize the power output of every combination. And basically we just lean this thing out and keep adding timing until it stops making power. And that's the maximum amount of power you can make from this combination. So our 4.8 liter run in this manner on the engine dyno produced peak power of 326 horsepower and 337 foot-pounds of torque. So it did well. You could see it's fairly torquey. It's making peak power out here at 5,600 RPM, and peak torque occurs, eh, well, 47, 4,800 RPM. Let's see how this compares to our 5.3 liter run in the same condition. This is a stock 5.3 liter. This particular one is an L33 aluminum 5.3 liter, so a little bit higher horsepower, a little bit better camshaft on the 5.3 liter. Otherwise, and it also had 799 heads on it. Same truck intake manifold, same throttle body, the 799 heads, flat top pistons, a little bit different camshaft than the LM7 that we're supposed that, that we normally use. The LM7 will be down about 10 horsepower on this combination, but run in this manner, our L33 aluminum 5.3 liter 
produced 365 horsepower and peak torque checked in at 389 foot-pounds of torque. And please note that, and we need to take a look at this, there are two things. One, if you, we look down low at the torque production offered by the 5.3 over the 4.8, we see gains of 40, 50, even as much as 60 foot-pounds in the meaty part of the torque curve. So down low with respect to a turbo combination, the 5.3 liter will definitely offer much better turbo response because it makes more low speed power. And those two things go together on any kind of turbo application. Also on an NA version, you'd feel the extra torque. It would be much snappier and would offer better acceleration through the whole curve because in this case, the 5.3 makes more power than the 4.8 all the way through the RPM range. If we look up at the top of the curve, we see the 5.3 actually makes peak power at 5,300 RPM, where the smaller 4.8 liter with roughly the same combination makes peak power at 5,600 RPM. So either it likes to rev because it's a smaller stroke or it has to rev because it's a smaller displacement, depending on which side of that argument you're on. The 4.8 liter actually likes to run or wants to run more engine speed. So you could offset some of this with gearing, <laughs> but it's very important to note that the 4.8 the in stock trim will always make less power than the 5.3 because the 5.3 is bigger. But let's see what happens now when we add camshafts the same camshafts to both motors. Okay, we've got some temperature in it. We'll see if it'll take a wide open throttle pull. Now that we take a look at a comparison between the 4.8 and the slightly larger 5.3 liter in stock trim, let's see what happens when we added camshafts to both of these. In this case, we ran the Brian Tooley Racing Truck Norris NSR cam on both of them. I also ran both of these with a sloppy stage two. We saw almost identical changes in power between the two with the slightly bigger sloppy stage two cam. But on the Truck Norris NSR cam, I'll give you an idea on how much it gained. This is the 4.8 liter. This was... This was stock versus the NSR cam. So we went from 326 horsepower to 375 horsepower on the 4.8 liter, which represented a gain of 49 horsepower. So right at almost 50 horsepower. But I want we want to do a comparison now. Here's what happened when we ran the same camshaft, the Truck Norse NSR camshaft on the bigger 5.3 liter. So we have a similar change in power that we saw even when we had the stock camshaft run with the Truck Norris cam on the 5.3. The 5.3 liter made 421 horsepower and that was up from 365 horsepower. So on the 5.3 liter, we went from 365 to 421, which is a gain of 56 horsepower. So we got a 56 horsepower gain on the 5.3 and a 49 horsepower gain on the 4.8 liter on the smaller combination. So we gain more on the bigger motor. But what I want you to look at is once again, like we did with the stock comparison, let's take a look at both ends of the curve here and kind of see what's happening once we put camshaft in these and how these would work for NA combinations and the most important thing, a turbo combination. So if we look again at the low speed power, we see that we have really big gains in torque in the 3000 to 3500 RPM range. We see at 3400, we go from 319 foot pounds to 389 foot pounds. So we've got a 70 foot pound gain there on the 5.3 liter. And all of that will translate directly into the thing being much more responsive under boost. Although it looks like had I continued to run this thing down at 2000 or even 2500, that the, the change in torque 
might have been not as dramatic at the very, very low uh, end of the RPM range. But if we take a look out at the top end, we start seeing them come together a little bit. Although with the 5.3 liter and the Truck Norris NSR cam, it seems to be holding fairly steady in terms of power production all the way out to and a little past 6,500 RPM. The 4.8 liter uh, would follow suit. I did not run it all the way out to 6,600 RPM, but we would start to see the same kind of thing. It would at least be holding its own or even rising a little bit because the 4.8 liter tends to want to rev a little bit higher than the 5.3 as we've seen there. I don't think we did um, all of the tuning and the RPM out there because when we ran the Trek Norris cam on the 4.8 liter, I ran it with the stock valve springs. I don't think we would get into valve float in this RPM range, but it would be interesting to try even more engine speed with that NSR cam and the 4.8 liter with those stock valve springs. If I were going to then run boost on this, or if I was going to constantly be running 6,500 or more RPM on this combination, I think I might think about a spring upgrade. Even just going to or from the 706 springs, the 500 lift spring, up to a 550 lift spring like the LS3 stuff or the LY6, even the factory spring upgrade at this point would be much better. Or you could go with a Beehive or a dual spring if you wanted to do that and then use the standard version of the Truck Norris cam, which is also possible, or lots of other camshafts. But we see a similar trend here with the 4.8 liter versus the 5.3 liter. The 5.3 liter, bigger, it has more, it has more, in this case, stroke. The bore size is the same. It has more stroke, it has more displacement, and therefore it makes more low speed power and makes more average power through the vast majority of the curve, in this case, all the way out to the top end. So when you're looking at running a naturally aspirated motor, a bigger motor, is gonna make more power, it's gonna make more average power, it's going to accelerate better, it'll feel better, obviously, if you've got a heavy vehicle. Also, with regards to a turbo combination, if you're running a turbo, the bigger motor is just gonna offer more low speed power and therefore better boost response. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, there you have it. What do you think about the comparison between our 4.8 and 5.3 liter? Did I do it justice? Should you always pick the 5.3? Well, yes and no. If you go to the wrecking yard, they're the same price. I would almost always pick the bigger of those two because it has more average power production, whether it's stock or after we had a camshaft. Very important when you're adding a turbo, it has more low speed boost response, so the response is gonna be better. It's just gonna be a better combination. Does that mean I would never pick the 4.8 liter? No, actually I would. I like the little 4.8 liter. It's the underdog. If you wanna run more engine speed, that's probably a better choice, not because the short stroke likes to rev morally, more aptly because it probably has to rev. And still, if you're looking at a seven or 800 or 900 horsepower combination with a turbo, the 4.8 will still do that. If I had my choice, I probably would pick the 6.0, <laughs> but that's another story because if it's outside the wrecking yard, it's gonna be more expensive because guys know people will pay a premium for that. I never see them in wrecking yard. If I find a vehicle that had a 6.0, more than likely the 6.0 is already gone. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.